Good morning. Um, I had a few things I wanted to say about my last video on buying expensive axes and just some clarifications. There was a lot of comments and a lot of activity on there, which is awesome. I love that. And uh, it gets me thinking, you know, it, it gets me thinking about stuff. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I should have emphasized that or said that or, or whatever. Also, that was kind of a rant, you know, which just brings a different flavor. <laughs> and it's not about being uh, completely reasonable or logical. But, you know, it's fun it's, in its own way. It's good to blow off some steam and it's funny and stuff like that. So anyway, I had a few clarifications I wanted to make. Uh, here's a quick story for you, though. Yesterday morning, I woke up at like 5 a.m. and I, I heard something outside and I, you know, I jumped up because I'm like hyper alert about things, what's going on outside and all my windows and doors are open and I heard something dragging. I'm like, damn, it's a bear, you know, getting into my hides and dragging off some hides or something like that. So I grab my headlamp, put on a pair of shoes and jump out on the porch. When I say porch, my porch is like a, made from a pallet. So it's that size. And, um, there was a rattlesnake on the porch and it was crawling across the porch boards and it making, you know, this dragging sound. And, uh, damn, that woke me up. Um, I was really lucky. It, I stepped probably within like eight inches of his tail, but he was headed the other way. Like his head was on the far corner of the pallet, but if he had been turned around or just curled up right there where I step out, cause it was dark, you know, and I wasn't like, Oh, let's look on the porch. I just stepped on the porch and then I was like, Oh, Oops. Uh, fortunately, he wasn't very feisty like a lot of our Pacific rattlesnakes are, are pretty mellow. Um, sometimes it's hard to get them to rattle at all. Like you can poke them with sticks and whatever and they just don't care. I feel like a smoker because it's been smoky for days here and really hot. So I've just been breathing smoke 24-7 from all the wildfires. And it was 108 in here yesterday. 108. And it was 110 outside. <laughs> Yeah, it's supposed to cool off today. Okay, so I had some clarifications and emphasis. First of all, I wasn't advocating, and I hope this came across because I did say it, but I just wanted to emphasize that I'm not, I'm not advocating that people buy complete and total junk. Um, most of the Axe brands out there right now that are available in the States here are complete and total junk, and you should not buy them. Um, the reason I mentioned Council Tool is because they're the company that's still doing domestic manufacture. They haven't sold out their name. And, you know, even their cheap stuff at least is usable and of reasonable quality. And it's, it's, the design is okay. Like most of the new stuff, um, the new junk stuff has these handles that are made from boards. So you can see that they just band sawed out the shape and then they take a router and round off the edges. And then that's, that's the handle, you know, the stuff I've seen, everything from handles and handle quality to head head quality and head design is just some of it's just abominable you know it's awful so i'm not advocating that people buy complete and total junk ever the other company in america that's trying to keep a quality domestic axe manufacturer going is snow and neely but it has changed hands um the rumors this is all rumors but i heard that they the company was either sold or it outsourced all its production to china or overseas somewhere and then some Amish people bought it and are trying to bring it back. And it even says on the website, like, um, you know, put together by Amish, Amish craftsmen or something, some bullshit like that, which, you know, it's silly because I got one and it didn't look like any craftsman put it together at all. And the design too, like the handle was super thick. I mean, it was beyond um, almost anything I've seen and that it's just ridiculous. Yeah, sure, it has a fancy laser burned logo on it but you have to scrape that thing off immediately just to get it to work and there were other issues with the axe and stuff like that if they can do that and they can produce quality axes and get someone to consult with that knows what they're doing and can get their product in line then you know we should be supporting them and we should be supporting both of those companies and there's an argument for supporting any company axe company that's still producing quality axes so that's a good argument that that some people made and I think that's totally valid, you know, and you have to think, remember, I'll talk about this in a minute more, but I, I have this like scrappy, you know, uh, broke homesteader mindset that I'm, I'm like projecting onto everyone else that I'm talking to. And I understand that not everyone's like that. But yeah, I think there's an argument for supporting <clears throat> all of those companies, including the, you know, fancy hand, quote unquote, hand forged Swedish axes, which also someone pointed out that um, it's inappropriate to call them hand forged and i agree and i do it all the time and i've tried to break the habit in the past and for whatever reason it always sticks but it's just 
you know, it's a guy holding the thing with a pair of tongs or whatever and working it under a series of machine dies that basically are like presses. So um, to say it's ha it's forged even, I mean, it's it's somewhere in a gray area there, but... So yeah, the other thing um, about supporting people, pe several people mentioned Liam, Liam Hoffman, who's a blacksmith in North Carolina, and he's a young guy that uh, started forging when he's like a teenager, and he ha he's an awesome craftsman, excellent craftsman and artist, and uh, I could hardly argue with supporting him. You know, I mean, his work is outstanding. He makes his own handles. Um, he's just got a great attention to detail. As far as his designs, I have nothing to say about his designs um, because I haven't seen any, so I don't I don't know. I, I invited him to the Cordwood Challenge at some point, but I didn't hear back from him. So I've, I've never communicated with him personally, but I've watched his YouTube channel a little bit. I think it's called Hoffman Blacksmithing. Um, but I do know uh, Max at Woodsman's Finest, and those two guys have been collaborating on a project to build um, Max's idea of a perfect uh, carving hatchet and I have a lot of faith in Max so I imagine that is going to be an outstanding tool. I think it's available now. If you haven't checked out Max, check him out at Woodsman's Finest on YouTube. Um, if you're interested in hatchet, traditional carving like hand tool carving, especially with hatchets, uh, he's as far as I've seen he's the guy to watch. Another thing is that I know when I was editing I realized that it could be seen that it could be seen as I was um, saying that I had drunk the Kool-Aid on the quality of Swedish axes and that they, you know, I was saying, well, if they're better and they stay sharp longer and they don't break and all that, well, I, I don't know that any of that is true. So I didn't mean to, to um, imply that. And I put like kind of a disclaimer on the screen. For all I know, that's just all marketing hype. Um, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I just didn't want to come off as like, oh, when you're ready, go buy one of these because I really... I really don't have much of an opinion on it. My perspective is kind of the scrappy homesteading DIY self-reliance thing. To me, that's all about doing it for yourself, making what you have work and spending less money. You know, don't throw money at problems as a homesteader. It will not work very well. You can get, you know, go hire people to do all kinds of stuff, but are they going to do it right? Are they going to do it well? I mean, what's the point? Is this just... Um, you know, isn't it a, is homesteading an aesthetic to you where you just move out and you get the stuff that looks right in your, you know, rustic fence and your log cabin and get a few chickens and you're like, yeah, I'm homesteading. Um, to me, it's more of an attitude. Like you don't even have to have a place because for me, it's like a philosophy or something of, of how to do things where you are relying on your skills, first and foremost, skills and knowledge and intelligence to engage the world around you to make something happen. I mean, that's kind of, it's like people weren't going and saying, oh, you know, let's go homesteading. They weren't like, okay, let's fill up like five wagons of the best tools that we are gonna buy or, or sit and work for, you know, five or 10 years to buy all this stuff. And then we're gonna go out to the, you know, frontier or the prairie or whatever and start a homestead. You know, for me, it's all about making do and spend really if anything spending as little money as possible and if you look at it that way you know buying a new axe at all isn't the ideal solution the ideal solution is to get something old get it for free if you can get it for cheap at the junk store or the flea market or yard sale and you know put something together to make it work ideally you'd make your own handles you know but you don't have to do all this stuff at once but you can kind of work toward it so you know i used to emphasize vintage and um, getting used stuff and putting it together a lot more but over time I think I've just drifted towards this out-of-the-box solution thing because I hear back from so many people that I just feel like are not that they're just like what you know like put put on my own handle they don't have any tools and they just want an axe that kind of works doing this video and, and reading the feedback and the comments and stuff I kind of started to rethink that a little bit and just realize that you know sure I'm looking for an out-of-the-box solution but at the same time I can't really advocate that people spend enough to get that if it even exists you know like the Swedish axes at the very least they need their handles you know tuned up so 
if you get the council boys axe for instance um, it needs all kinds of work uh, the head's going to come loose sooner than later it just is and you're going to have to take out that aluminum wedge and reset the handle and then you know drive in a wooden wedge and get get that geared up none of them come even close to ready to chop like you need to spend time filing for me it's under an hour for a lot of people it'd be like an hour or more of filing so you need to file anyway you have to learn these skills anyway and at that point it's like okay well you're gonna spend 30 um they can be under the council tool boys acts can be under 30 dollars or over 30 dollars so let's say average of 30 dollars and you might be able to put something vintage together for even less than that, especially if you have a source of handles like a hardware store where you can go and really pick out, you know, a handle that works. Because sometimes, you know, one in 20 of them just happens to be a really nice handle because they're not paying enough attention to get all the good wood out of there or something like that. I don't know how it works. Using an axe comes with a set of skills that you need. You know, it, it's not like you just get an axe and, and buy your way into this thing and then you, you just go, right? And if you have a problem, you throw some more money at it. It doesn't work like that. You need this set of skills. So you need a file already, you know, get a four-way rasp for working on handles, get a file. You don't need that much, you know, a knife, uh, maybe a hatchet if you're gonna make your own handles or a draw knife or spoke shave. And uh, yeah, start learning that stuff. I think that's really a better solution. And I feel like, you know, now that I look back, I feel like I've been drifting off of that, which is my really my roots and off this idea of pushing people out of their comfort zone and saying, yeah, well, you know, you, you need to learn this anyway. So get an old ax head, get a handle and make it work. It's not easy necessarily to fit ax heads uh, to handles and it takes some skill and time to figure out you probably screw it up I've screwed it up quite a few times putting handles on anything <clears throat> it takes time it takes patience and a good eye and you have to test it and retest it and fit it and pay attention to what you're doing so yeah I think that's really my number one recommendation is to to go vintage it doesn't have to be vintage either it can just be any used um, axe head that's of a reasonable quality I know some people said it's hard for them to find them in their area at all that's just not true here it's easy to find them that's my best recommendation i think at this point you're going to learn the most if you get something used and try to put it together yourself but again i think the council tool boys axe is a reasonable gamble there's a good chance you'll get a good one if you get a good one they're perfectly serviceable you're supporting council tool however you know in however small a way they have higher uh, priced items too that you could get as well and give them more money okay gotta go through that at the top but I leave like a little triangle of wood joined at the bottom so I don't actually have to cut all the way down to the dirt and I take the whole thing roll it over and just walk along and bust pieces off one Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight.